There's a video I'm going to show you a segment of. It's, um, it's a video made by Matthew Anderson, right? It's his last name. Matthew came on our trip to Kenya with us. It shows uh, a, a, a piece of, of an experience that we had um, when we went to Dorcas City. And, uh, and then on this, just this one day that we experienced uh, how the Lord has been using Bridgewood Church to minister to families and widows, children in uh, Tala, Kenya, and the region around. So as the Kenyan team makes their way up to the front, I invite you to take a look at the opening of Dorcas City. So I'm standing here. Hello, Hi. USA team Hi. and Hello. Dorcas City team. Yes. And we're standing here on the property of Dorcas City. This is Pastor John Zomo and his wife, Nina. When people drive up to the front, when they come in here, they will see uh, we have a building here, which will be for the for the hotel of the, the Docker City. There will be a hotel as you drive in. For the Docker City. For Docker City. And also a shop will be there. There will be shops and then there will be retail shops. There will be retail shops. And so owners will rent those retail shops. Owners will rent these shops and the proceeds of the from the shops go to Dorcas. So there will be an income for the ministry of Dorcas City through the businesses established in the city as you enter onto the property. Yes. Ah, find the church there. We have a deep gospel church there. These are, these are rocks that uh, will be used in the construction of the facility because this is the way in Talakini buildings are built. They're yeah. built with rocks and cement yes. and then they transform them into gorgeous buildings. Yes. And these rocks are the first cornerstones yes of the building of the building we see a building for the widows yeah we see the Mara can explain that yeah we intend to have a redeemed gospel church starting and then we have a children's home we have DCI Academy and then a training center we'll be training the leaders and widows we want to empower people the word empower yes so this will be a place where a widow can come in and she will be trained, yes. she'll be educated, yes. and she will be empowered to go out. Yes. And some of the work she does in this ministry will be a blessing to others. We know that there are others in Team USA. Maybe you're part of this team and maybe the Spirit of God is part of And we invite you to look at this with a serious heart. Is God calling you to a ministry that builds a city? that builds a school, that builds a, a, an empowerment center for widows, that builds a church, that people can be empowered to be viable, strong, godly, transforming members of society. When we invite you to become a partner with us here at Dorcas Amen. City in Telekenya. God bless you. Amen. 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 Everybody say, Karibu Kenya. So this is the team that, uh, minus a, a couple, that went to Kenya. And aren't they beautiful? Let's praise God for their work. And uh, you supported this team in, in such many ways. I, I did cut off on the video a little section of, of um, what's her name? Carol. Carol talking. I always call her Rose or something else. And... Um, she, uh, she was standing in front of the, the widow industry, and this video will be made available on our webpage. And I invite you to take a look at it. It's got segments of preaching. It's got segments of, of um, flying above and looking down. Um, Matthew had a, um, a drone, and he just, see, these guys are here just to give the words. A drone, and he took pictures from high up. But I'd like, I'd like you to, guys just to, to hear just a few.
few moments what amazing thing God did with using you at, um, at, 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 at the doorstep of people who have just barely anything to survive and how God blessed them through you as a church. This is Carol. I'm just going to ask her just to, just to talk about this widow ministry. What has happened with the money that we gave? What happened? It is absolutely unreal what's happened to these guys. Um, first of all, they're getting to Orca City. And they are beginning to uh, make things to sell. And in Dorca City, they will have the church, but also places where they can make their goods and they can also sell them, which is awesome. The women, uh, we went to see the, uh, their um, place of living and um, And we got, uh, we've got response back from Allie's pastor that she, she just nailed it. And she spoke on forgiveness. And, and then we also went on evangelism tour and we went into villages and Mally stood strong and gave a talk on, on forgiveness. Mally, just give us a touch. What was that like standing before these people speaking? about what the Lord God has done in your heart? Um, well, it was actually uh, harder than it looked because, I mean, with a translator, and we actually had, because I was going so fast and Purity was translating my English to English that she could understand, and then she would translate it in Swahili. P purity over there. Really. And it was just kind of chaotic. But we, we got through, and... and um, but it was uh, like I'm not I'm not very good at talking in front of a lot of people. But once I was up there and I was saying what I wanted to say, it um, I think it I think it went well. It it went so well um, that the Lord used Mally for first time standing in front of these people to bring a blessing of forgiveness to this church and to people in the city. There were after. After Mally talked, there were people who came and gave their life to Jesus um, at the village. It was just wonderful. So we have, we have about, it's, it's insane, we have about six hours worth of things to talk to you about. But over through the month of January, uh, individually, these guys are going to come up. And I'm going to interview them individually. And we're going to hear uh, what God did individually in them in Kenya. But also what God can do in us when we take a step forward and we, we do more than just respond and do more than just sit back and hope God does something in us, but when we press in, like this team has done, they've pressed in and the Holy Spirit has worked in them and they're not the same, are they? None of us are the same. I would like to... Uh, it, just invite um, Pastor Coino. Pastor Coino is um, is 
part of our church, part of our membership, and this, his family. And Pastor Coino started this church in Tala. Um, would you give us just a say, statement? You stayed a little longer. How did the church receive us? And uh, how was our relationship with the church in Tala? Uh, in short, um, Bridgewood Church is, has become part of Tala Church. When they talk about Bridgewood, they feel they are part of you. And so they really appreciate every little thing you have done to the church there. And they wish they could both of them come here and see you. That is their prayer, and that is what they are praying God to some of them to open door to come and see you. Um, on, on top of going to Kenya, there are many things that God did. As Pastor was saying, it can take a whole month to explain many things that God did. Um, first of all, apart from preaching here a lot to do, groundbreaking of Dorocas City, where we tell a church is putting a new church. And the name of Dorocas comes with the windows. That's why they call it Dorocas City for the windows. So when you, you will be hearing about Dorocas as time goes. And apart from break, uh, groundbreaking for the new church, he also opened um, a new home for Pastor John and Elena. And so it was, every day was activity for, Bridge, uh, for Bridgewood members or Team USS, we call them. And I remember the, the, the first day when we were, we went out with a bus loaded with the loudspeaker on the top. And we went from one market to another, speaking about the love of Jesus. And there's one market where we stopped and we sang, and um, he preached a little bit. And we got about, how many people? Four. About five. Five. They were five souls came to the Lord, just one single market. And so you can see how Bridgewood Church you are doing. Uh, don't despise the little things you are doing. Souls are coming to the Lord. Even when you are here, when you send us, you have gone there. What we are doing there, you are part of it. When we reach to heaven, you will be surprised. God is paying you. You will be asking, when did I go to Tala? But something little you did, it saved us all. God bless you. God bless you. Let's praise God for this team and for this work. Thank you. So you'll be hearing from this team throughout the month, and uh, uh, we'll, we'll be incorporating what they have to say to us into the, into the sermon series. It'll, be, it'll just be a blast. Hey, um, do you want to hear a few minutes of uh, some teaching out of the Word? Okay, let's do that. And I have, I already opened up the, the whole topic to you this morning in Luke chapter 2, when looking at Simeon and what incredible thing God did in and through Simeon. And what, what happened to Simeon is what happens perhaps in our week, where the young and the old get together and there was no conflict. Well, maybe you had conflict in your home, but we had 13 people in our home. How many? 13, three kids, 10 adults. And did we get along? Yeah. We had to do with the normal Heisinger smells and things like that. But other than that, we did great. And what, what we saw was, what we saw was young and old coming together in one unified stand before God. A Christmas home. What we see in our text today is the old and the new 
coming together with no conflict, but with incredible unity. What God has done showing that he is in control of all. It's the end of the age and it's the beginning of a new age. I already read to you about Simeon, how he stood uh, before the baby Jesus and testified that the work of the Lord God was begun. We see he's a, Simeon was a devout man. He was in his 80s. He had been waiting for the consolation of Israel, meaning he'd been waiting for the Messiah to come to bring the understanding that um, though the, the light to the Gentiles would come through the people of God. He stands there at the closing of an age and the opening of a new age. Jesus said it this way in Luke chapter 16. Later, he says, the law and the prophets were proclaimed until John. And since that time, the good news of the kingdom of God is being preached. What we're seeing in this text today with Simeon at the temple after Jesus comes as at eight days after being born, brought to the temple to be um, circumcised, we see that the end of the law and the prophets has come and that the new age of life in Jesus Christ begins. And Jesus says it this way, the law and the prophets were proclaimed until John. Since John the Baptist is the ending, the last of the prophets before the new age. Since that time, the good news of the kingdom of God is being preached. What is the good news of the kingdom of God? The good news is this, is that we experienced it as you walked up to the table this morning, is that every person, every man, every child, every woman, every teenage girl, every 90, 100-year-old, one-year-old, pre-born, pre-born child has the covenant of the Lord God directed directly at them and directly at you saying, I love you. I love you. I have life for you. Everyone in the world, think about this. Every soul is known and loved by God. And his desire is that every heart, every soul belongs to him. That's what happens in Jesus. This is, this is the text uh, that I'd like to just look at for a moment. A light for the revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. This is what Simeon says. This is what the Lord God spoke, that the work of the kingdom of God is an ending of the age of the prophets, an ending of the age of the law, where only the Israel nation could come before the living God through the sacrifice of the, of the animals and the blood that was sacrificed. Only the people of God in Israel could see the light. But then with Jesus Christ, the end of that age happens. And now Jesus opens up salvation to all. There is light for the entire Gentile world. Meaning, Gentile meaning people who are not Jewish. Everyone, everyone has the light of the revelation of God. So what, what does it mean that we need light Well, first of all, you know that it means that we have darkness in this world, right? There is darkness. Oh my goodness, there is darkness. We have light because there is darkness in this age. And it, it started in the Garden of Eden. It started with sin entering the world. It started when man said, I would like to be God myself. We need light. We need light. There aren't nations that are less dark than other nations. There isn't a national gospel that says we are light and you are not. There's darkness in the world. The only hope for light comes in the new age in Jesus Christ, in the birth of the Son of God. 
As you will see in the Bible, there is no conflict between the old and the new because the seamless transition happens through the birth of Jesus Christ. Jesus doesn't abolish the law. We still have the Ten Commandments. We still have the moral law, the moral code. We still see that God has established himself in, in, in a moral understanding of what is right and what is wrong. We don't see Jesus abolishing that and getting us, giving us freedom to live however we want to live. We still have morality, and God is the author of morality. But there is no conflict between the old and the new because Jesus carries that incredible moral law into the new. There is no conflict in the new age of what God has gone before because Jesus is the fulfillment of sacrifice. He becomes the sacrifice. Jesus is the fulfillment of prophecy. He is the great prophet. Jesus is the fulfillment of the priests. He is the great high priest. And now he, to his church, he gives the gifts of prophecy and priesthood and sacrifice to everyone who believes in him. A seamless transition from the old to the new. And it's our gift. I love how um, Joseph and Mary, when they came, they honored the old covenant. It says in verse 23 of chapter 2 of Luke 2, it says, As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male is to be consecrated to the Lord. And so they came to the temple and they offered uh, Jesus. And it says, um, when the parents brought in the child to do for him what the custom of the law required. So Jesus was, um, came into the old covenant and his parents honored the old covenant, but he breaks us into the new. Jesus is the answer. Jesus is the unity. Jesus brings the new covenant the new age to every one of us. Now, there is a light in this new era that is for every Gentile. I want you to think of church for a moment in the United States. We maybe think of a Christian as what they do. We think of a Christian as somebody who engages in activity of going to church or they believe in Jesus. But I want to tell you that being a Christian is more than activity and even belief. See, the devil actually believes in Jesus, and the devil is very active, but the devil isn't a Christian. Let me say that again. The devil believes in Jesus, and he's very active, and I think he probably goes to church every week but he's not a Christian. I think we've made a mistake in the United States of misidentifying Christianity. It's a matter of the heart. It's the transforming work of God within us. It's the movement of light. And light is not gray. It doesn't say, and a grayness for revelation to the Gentiles. What God is looking for in Jesus Christ in this new movement of God from the old covenant to the new is a transformed heart for the light of heaven to completely penetrate the heart. It's either you belong to him or you do not. It's not just belief. It is transformation. Paul says it this way in 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17. 5 verse 17, he says, the old has gone, the new has come. When you become a believer in Jesus, you are a new creation. He comes in and transforms you. You, before you believe in Jesus, you have darkness as your future. This week I watched uh, one of those Facebook, um, YouTube little clips, right, that you find in Facebook. Somebody showed what uh, atheists believe, and this person was an atheist who posted this, what atheists believe. And as I listened to it, 
they, it seemed like they were continually making excuses uh, and trying to, find, trying to prove that, that uh, God did not exist. But in the end, they proved that he did because, because of, of, of their hearts crying out for something. See, we all cry out for something and the light of the presence of Jesus penetrates and says, I am not satisfied with the darkness within you. I will wipe it out. I'm not going to just allow darkness to be in there a little bit. By the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, I am going to completely pay for your sin. By the resurrection of Jesus from the dead, I am going to squash the power of evil within you and will have no more power. The light of Christ is a complete work of heaven for you. And he shines his light within you by putting his presence inside you to live with him forever. And then he says, the glory of your people Israel. You know what the glory is? That's the evidence of his presence. And that's why I'm saying to you, don't go into 2018 with no evidence of the presence of God in your life. Don't go into 2018 just walking along, plodding along like you always have. Press in. Press in and grab a hold of the corner of his gown and let the glory of heaven flood into you. Let the movement of God determine your walk. Let the movement of the glory of God determine your thoughts. Let the movement of the glory of God give you the capacity to make the decisions that are God's decisions. He will do this in you as you press in. His glory will be seen in you as you press in. If you have an impossibility right now, if your impossibility is something that you're saying, I doubt God's going to do this because he's not done the impossibles in my life, I invite you to press in. If there's something that needs to be broken in your life, I invite you to press in. It will be broken as the glory of heaven floods into your life. See, in this new, it's not human dependent. It's totally God dependent. God does this work. But it is human cooperation. God says to you, will you join me? Will you go where I am? Where you see the glory of God at work, will you join it or will you be stuck on yourselves? Will you move where God is moving? Will you work where God is working? Will you join him where God is seen to be at work, where his glory is going before you? Will you press in? Will you step in to the light, which is an all-consuming light? I invite the worship team to come up. And as we take a transition from the old year into the new year, I'd like to invite you to stand and get ready to make a transition with me. Would you do that? Would you stand and make this transition with me? There's a song we're going to sing. It's God You Reign. This song just talks about um, the things in our lives that we've held on to, that we've been the ones who reign in these things. I'm going to ask the Lord to give us a moment of revealing the things that we have just let, not let God have, but that we've controlled. Holy Spirit, we stand now in your presence. Jesus, we stand before your throne. I ask that, Jesus, you would breathe upon us like you breathed upon the disciples you breathe upon us right now and those things God that we are holding on to in the dark 
that we're holding on to in the old, the old self, the old things that are still ruling us. Right now, God, I ask that you would wash with your light, that you would expose those things. And Lord, we now yield to you. I invite you to just uh, take hold of the things physically inside. You could do it physically. You could do it spiritually. Take hold of those things and give them over to the Lord Jesus Christ. The old is gone. The new has come. Lord, I ask that you would anoint your glory on this church and on these people. Would you pour out your glory, your present glory? It's called in the Old Testament your Shekinah glory, meaning your reigning presence. Lord, when you reign in us, when you reign in us, no matter if we go from here to the other side of the world, if we go from this place to another state, would you reign in us that the Lord will be seen and that we will go and work where the Lord is at work. We will see his glory and we will engage with his glory. We will press in with the glory of God. We'll see lives changed, hearts touched, neighborhoods filled by the glory of God. And when we speak, the glory of God will be in our words. When we pray, the glory of God will fill our minds. Whatever we touch will be touched by the glory of God. The glory of God. Whatever we see, we can see with the glory of God, the glory of God. So fill my friends with your glory. Fill their hearts with your love. Fill my friends with your glory. Reign in us, Lord. Heal us, Jesus. Get us ready for the light. In Jesus' name.